In this video, we'd like to talk uh, about what we'd call B-field systems or magnetic field systems. So these are systems made out of wire, and the wire that they're made out of is carrying current, and so they generate magnetic fields. We'd like to take a look at some of those results. The first one is just a straight piece of wire. I think that was covered in a previous video that involved the Biot Savar law. We'll look at that just sort of to get ourselves started here for the sake of completeness. Then we have uh, so a wire that carries current. Then we'll go on, uh, next move on to a loop of wire that carries current. And the last system we'll look at is the solenoid. So to start out with a wire then, we are just talking about something like this. Here's a piece of wire right here. So what we're talking about is suppose you took a piece of wire like this and just ran a current down like this. Just down like that, connected to a battery on one side or the other and just had some current going through the wire. What do you expect to see? Now this wire isn't very straight, but there we go. Try and get a little straighter on that. So something like this, you would conceivably draw like this. So here's the wire here. And suppose you have some current traveling in it like that. Uh, the question before you then is then uh, if you move to a point maybe right here above the wire, we'll label it some point R like that, and you might ask the question, what is the magnetic field at this point above the wire? Um, if the wire goes to infinity in both directions, so say it goes to minus infinity that way and to infinity that way, in other words, the wire is extremely long, then the result you get is that the magnetic field is mu naught I over 2 pi r. This is the magnetic field away from a wire. And there is a certain uh, symmetry about the wire, like for instance, looks like I sort of drew this equation in an unfortunate position. Maybe let's just move it over here a bit. A result mu naught i over 2 pi r. Never hurts to write it a couple times there, something like that. And if the magnetic field above the wire, this is the magnitude over here that we'd experience above the wire. And we know from the right hand rule that I put my thumb in the direction of the current here and wrap my hands around the wire, the magnetic field is going to be pointing up towards us there at the top. So again, here's that wire. If I put my thumb in the direction of the wire and curl my hands under it, see how my fingertips are pointing straight up? That means the magnetic field here is going to be pointing straight towards me. Draw it like that. If I go to a point at distance r below the wire, say right here, also distance r below the wire like that, and I curl my hands in the direction of the current right here and I come back around, see how my fingertips are trying to go down into the page like that? That means the magnetic field is going to be down like this. And there's similar points all over the wire, but the bottom line is that if I sort of draw the wire with a bit of perspective now, if I can, so here it is sort of maybe coming at us in three-dimensional space. If I put my thumb in the direction of that current here like that, and here's that wire with perspective in three-dimensional space. If I put my thumb in the direction of the wire and try and curl around the wire like that to visualize the magnetic field, I'll sort of get something that looks like this. The magnetic field sort of generates a circle like that, which goes in all directions around the wire like that. So this is the near side right here. And I guess if I was really going to get this perspective right, that's the far side over there. This sort of passes in front like that, make it a little thicker because it's coming at us like that. And this is the wire here sort of going back behind, excuse me, the magnetic field going back behind the wire. So the B field here is going to look something like that for the wire. Again, another perspective. If I drew the wire coming straight at us like that, so I took this red piece of wire here, I drew it and, and I held it so it's coming straight at us like this. And you see the tip of the wire right there. Here's the current coming out at us like that. Put my thumb in the direction of that current and curl my hand around like that. The magnetic field will exist and appear to be over here at the top, over here at the bottom, up over here, down over here, sort of up the diagonals along these corners like this. And that's sort of what it would appear to be. Now, if I just filled in all the points and connected everything I could all the way around this wire here, I would get a magnetic field that's in something like that. Makes a circle like that. That would be the B field for the wire. Okay, so that's sort of the way the wire works in there. Let's move on to the magnetic field due to a loop. So a loop is just what you think, is if I took this piece of wire like this and sort of just made it nice and round like this, something like this, and then I sort of maybe made two very small edges on here, which aren't going to contribute anything because they're so, so small compared to the loop. So I made a loop of wire like this, okay? And what I could do then is feed current in this top lead, let it go around like that and come out the bottom side, but you understand then I have a, a loop of current, okay? So what do I get then? Well, it's a system that looks like this. So here's the loop right here, and let me go ahead and draw the z-axis going out like this. So here's the z-axis right here. And the loop will be situated then along the x-y plane like this. So this is the x-axis here and that's the y-axis. There's the z-axis out there like that. 
And again, the current is going to be coming down around here. I'm just trying to draw a little perspective on this thing here. So I'm going to draw the front of this of the loop here a little bit thicker than the back. I'm not sure this is helping at all there, but there, that's sort of the side that faces us here. And if I do something like that, and suppose I get the current now fed into this loop so that it comes down like this. So here's the current that's going to come down loop. So it's coming down here sort of in a counterclockwise sense. What I'm going to get way out here is we have to stay on axis here. So this is a loop here. And one of the requirements of our theory here in all of elementary physics is that you stay on axis like this. Meaning you choose the axis of loop and you will never choose a point that's not on the z axis like this. Never would you have a point here, 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 anywhere like that. It must be on axis like that. The uh, reason being is because the problem just gets, becomes too complicated to solve off axis. You need to go to, like, to graduate school or take an advanced class in electricity to get that theory. But what you get then in a case like this here is the magnetic field is going to point away from the loop like that. And it has its own equation here, much like the line did. We'll just get that out of here. It's in u naught i over r squared over 2. And then you have a 1 over z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves power. So this is the magnetic field, a distance z. This is the distance that you are from the loop, a distance z here from a loop where the loop has a radius of r like that. This is the magnetic field that you'll get. Now, I'm using the right-hand rule to get the direction like this because if I put my, my fingertips in the direction of the current going around the loop like that, here's another version of the right-hand rule, around the loop like this, see my thumb points in the direction of that away towards the right. So here's the loop again like this, and I put my fingertips in the direction of the loop and come around like that. See that when my thumb is pointing out that way, that's the direction of the Z of, of the B field. And of course, if I reverse the current like that, my fingertips would be in the direction of the current going around the other way, and my thumb would point the other way. Of course, the magnetic field direction would reverse itself. So it can point this way only for this orientation of the current, but if the current direction changes, goes opposite, then the magnetic field will flip as well. And the other thing you can do is not only do you stay on axis like this, but you could, could go at the center of the loop. And what the center of the loop means, you just choose your point z is equal to zero. So you can certainly get there. It means let's just pull this point all in towards the center of the loop and ask ourselves what the magnetic field will be. And in this case here, it just sort of reduces down to mu naught i over 2. Now, if z is 0, then we have r squared to the 3 halves power, which is just r cubed, but we have this r squared in the top. So you get something like that at the center. Looks very much like that due to a wire, but there's no pi in the bottom right there. But this is the magnetic field at the center of a loop of radius r. So you can certainly get a magnetic field uh, there as well. And the direction, of course, is governed by the right-hand rule. So that's just sort of another system. And we just sort of want to emphasize here uh, its results here, that whenever you have a loop, no matter how it's oriented, you'll always get a magnetic field on its axis like this. So here's a little loop like this. And if you sort of picture the axis of the loop going in like that, there'll be a B field out this way. If the current's coming down like that, the way I've drawn, and of course the, the, current, the magnetic field over on this side of the loop will be pointing towards it as well. And the loop can be just be oriented just about any old orientation like that. So suppose it's up like this. Here's the axis of that loop again. And suppose I have the current sort of coming around. This is the front of the loop right here. That's the front. So suppose I have that current coming around in the front like this. The magnetic field over here is going to point sort of this way and this way for that loop. So just no matter what the orientation is, you can always picture a loop, an axis, and the magnetic field sort of at some point will sort of point in a direction towards or away from the loop, depending on what the current is like. That's just any old orientation you want. So you have a magnetic field at this point pointing inwards and pointing the same direction like that, depending on what the current direction is. So just all kinds of loops you can draw. Let's hope you can just get, get that picture in your head that you would just imagine the loop sitting there with this current flowing it. And you can always draw an axis of a loop, and everywhere on the axis there will be a little bitty, not a little bitty, but a magnetic field pointing parallel or anti-parallel to that axis. So here's the B here and B here, and there's the B there and the B there. Here's the B there and the B there. Here's the B and here's the B. So that's the way these loops behave, okay? Moving on to the last system then would be the solenoid. So what the solenoid is here, system number three, So what you get if you take a loop of wire like this and you just wrap it in many, many, many turns. You just keep on going like that and you create like a tube 
a wire like that. That would be the solenoid. So if I look at a solenoid on edge like that, uh, maybe if I use something like a piece of wood or something to guide my design like that, you would just imagine wire wraps all the way around it like this. And I'm drawing them sort of exaggerated for clarity like that. They look like little integral signs in there. But you just imagine then there's a wire coming out and this wire comes out there. That would be a solenoid where these things here, the wire wraps around that inner tube there. So now if you imagine I just slide the tube out, what would I be left with? It would be a bunch of wire wraps like that. So the solenoid, uh, the magnetic field inside of a solenoid comes from a theory called Ampere's Law, which I'm not going to discuss here because in elementary physics its use is so limited it's not even worth talking about. But the magnetic field inside of a solenoid is something that if you started to run current through this thing here, again, these look like little wire segments right here. So let's, if we look at the solenoid like this, let's suppose then that however I pipe in the current, the current is going down like this. So in all these wire segments, it goes down, the current is going down like that. That's the way the loops go. So that's the current direction right there. And if I treat each one of those like a little piece of wire, I'd imagine with a right-hand rule then that I'd put my thumb in the direction of this downwards current like that and loop my hands back around into the midsection of the solenoid like that so my fingers point to the right. So what that means in this configuration here, the magnetic field of the solenoid is all inside this interior here. It's like my blue marker is kind of failing. Let me get another one. So the magnetic field will be all in this interior region here. Here and here and here and here. And all pointing to the right like that. So the B is going to be these blue lines here all pointing to the right like that. And that's, that's all in the interior of the solenoid, inside that inner core. So the magnetic field lines are just all in this region right here, sort of coming out like that, given the direction of current I have. So this, the, the magnetic field of a solenoid is deep in that inner core right there. And the equation is fairly straightforward here. The magnetic field magnitude is mu naught N over L times I. So I is the amount of current that you run through the solenoid. Again, you see that connection between current producing a magnetic field. And N here is the number of turns that you wrap the solenoid with here. So that's what N is right here. Number of turns. Because obviously you can wrap the solenoid with more turns or less turns, and that will affect the magnetic field strength here. And L is simply just the length of the solenoid like that, just the length. So if you made the solenoid very short or very long, that will also affect the magnetic field. In this case here, there's L. And so all those things come together then, that's the magnetic field due to a solenoid. You have the equation, you have a direction, you have the whole bit going on, and um, that's the last of our three systems there. So once again, you have these three systems here that can uh, current can be run through. They can generate their own magnetic fields. You have these wires like this, which would generate magnetic fields would be circulating like that. And the magnetic field doesn't actually circulate, but it forms a circular pattern like that. So that would be the B field due to the straight wire. This is the current going into the page or out of the page. Then you have the loop like this. And you always think on axis like that, that if you had a current, say, coming down this direction here, you get a B field out over in that direction there, coming back in this direction right here. And lastly, of course, is that solenoid, which is just a bunch of wires all wrapped up like this. Sort of connected anyway. They're kind of hard to draw like that, but there you go. There's one wire coming out. There's another wire coming out. And if you make the current go down here in this direction here, I can run my, again, my thumb down the direction of current, wrap my fingers into the interior of the solenoid. I get a nice, strong magnetic field in the interior region of the solenoid only. So in that interior region, there isn't much outside at all in that interior region there. Sort of drawing it with some perspective here so that the wire wraps don't look like they're, or the wire wraps to look like they're on the outside. And these are the B field lines. They're just inside the interior of the solenoid there. So also as reviewed earlier in the video, each one of these has their own equation. They're not necessarily the same. This one depends on the distance of the wire and the current in the wire. This one depends on the distance from the ring, the radius of the ring, and the current of the ring. And this one depends on the current in the solenoid as well as its length and the number of turns that you made the solenoid out of. Solenoid out of. So anyway, there's three magnetic field systems, common ones too.